Inter's Experiences, that's the name of the show. Hey, welcome back to Inter's Experiences. Today we're going to be talking about androgen insensitivity syndrome, AIS. More specifically, we'll be talking about complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, CAIS. Now, I'm not a doctor, nor a scientist, and I don't represent all intersex people, but I am going to be talking about my experience being androgen insensitive. I'm not a huge fan of the word syndrome. It makes me sound like I'm sick or damaged, neither of which are true. And I feel like most intersex activists aren't a fan of the term syndrome or any of the medicalized terminology that are used to describe our bodies. Some people love the term AIS, and that's great for them, but for me, that's not something I prefer. I would just prefer to say that I don't respond to androgens and my body doesn't respond to testosterone, something like that. I'm sure that's pretty confusing, so let's break it down a little bit. Androgens are what we refer to as the male hormones, and I'm using air quotes because hormones aren't inherently male or female. We all have the same hormones. It's just that male body people typically have higher levels of androgens, and female body people typically have higher levels of estrogens. But hormone levels vary from person to person, regardless of sex and gender. So when I talk to people about androgens, I usually just say that my body doesn't respond to testosterone, because that's what most people are familiar with, but in reality there's actually a lot of different types of androgens like androstenedione and dihydrotestosterone and other weird dumb ones, but basically my body doesn't know what to do with any of them. So when I was a little fetus, a little tiny fetus Emily, I had XY chromosomes and those XY chromosomes told my gonads to become testes. Now most people start off in the womb with bipotential gonads, meaning their gonads have the potential to become testes or ovaries. And that's not the case for everybody and that doesn't cover the scope of what gonads can do and we can talk about that in a later video, but for me my gonads became testes. So when those little tiny baby balls started making androgens, my body was just like, nope, we don't know what this is and it didn't know what to do with them. It couldn't process any of it, it didn't know how to handle all the androgens or testosterone or other hormones that were coursing through my little fetus. Because of that, I developed into what you see today. Um, I didn't grow a penis or a scrotum. Internally, that means that I didn't have ovaries, nor did I have a uterus. So now, as an adult, I don't get a period, and I can never have children, which for some people, that's a blessing, and some people, it's not so much. Um, it was definitely hard for me growing up knowing that, and still can be hard, but that's something we'll talk about in a later video. But once I started going through puberty, my body, even though it had all this testosterone, it didn't recognize it, so it really needed hormones. So it started turning those androgens into estrogens. And this is a process called aromatization, and it's something that all people do, all of our bodies kind of balance out by turning some testosterone into estrogens. Like I said, we all have the same hormones and we just have different levels of them. And so because I did have that estrogen that was aromatized, I started going through a typical female puberty. I grew breasts and had wider hips and different fat distribution. Our bodies have a way of self-regulating. And this is because hormones are really important. Most people just assume that hormones are responsible for sex drive and mood swings, but they actually do so much for us that most people don't realize. They regulate your bone density, or they seal your growth plates, they help your brain develop, um, they help your body metabolize food, or uh, respond to stress. They do so much for our bodies, but for some reason people just think they regulate sex drive or mood swings, which is ridiculous. They're so important. One of the cool things that androgens do for your body is they regulate your sebaceous glands. Sebaceous. And your sebaceous glands actually create body oil and body odor. That's why when you start going through puberty, you usually start wearing deodorant, or you start bathing more because you start having different body odors or body oils that you weren't used to. And when you go through puberty, a lot of people will start developing facial hair or body hair in places like your armpits or nether region. That is all because of your androgens. And since I don't respond to androgens, that means I never got any of that stuff. I don't really have body odor. I don't, I've never had to shave my armpits or anything because I just, this was the wrong outfit for this. I don't get body hair. And I'm not going to tell you when the last time I showered was, mostly because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the longest I went without a shower was a full month and nobody knew, like just because 
it's something I can get away with because I don't have oil production. My hair doesn't get greasy or I don't have body odor to make me smell like I haven't showered. So that's really gross, but for me it's kind of fun to not have to worry about shaving or getting acne. Those are some perks of uh, my specific intersex variation that I enjoy. Androgen insensitivity runs on a spectrum, so people can be completely insensitive or completely sensitive or somewhere in the middle, it just kind of depends. People who are insensitive to androgens end up getting operated on a lot, whether we want to or not. Um, I've been really lucky not to have been operated on, but um, that's a much bigger topic and I've already talked a lot, so we're gonna cover that in my next video. But thanks for sticking with me this far. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, please like this video and let me know what you liked in the comments below. Um, if you wanna see more videos like this, then please hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace.